Hello everyone, welcome back to the Anatomy Lab. Today we are going to be taking a look at a focus on the nephron. And to do that, we have this kind of color-coded nephron. So let's go ahead and get started with the Bowman's capsule, which are going to be these green balls. So those are going to be where you find the glomerulus inside. But at the moment, you can only see the outside, which are these smooth kind of spherical structures, the Bowman's capsules. Now, with that said, if you look closely, we can kind of follow where it goes from the nephron by seeing what is connected to these Bowman's capsules. Now, you'll have two tubes out here, and you can see that these tubes are very winding or very convoluted. These two tubes are called the proximal and distal convoluted tubules. But the question that you need to ask yourself is, how do you know which one is which? So if you look at any of these given Bowman capsules, you can see that, that the orange tube is directly connected to it. So here, here, and then here as well. These proximal convoluted tubules are attached to the Bowman's capsules. Now, if you follow this orange tube, it's going to be kind of hard, but you can ultimately see that it's going to lead to this other side, which then goes down this long U-shape. In fact, you can't even see the whole thing. This long U-shape is called the loop of Henle, sometimes otherwise known as the nephron loop. But if you look at the proximal convoluted tubule, you'll see that this side is going to be the descending limb of the loop of Henle. That is then going to go down all the way to where it starts to loop and then go back up the ascending limb of the loop of Henle. Now, furthermore, if you look at the ascending limb of the loop of Henle, you can see that it is attached to a different tube. This tube is called the distal convoluted tubule. Now, this one specifically is not connected to the Bowman's capsule. And instead, if you follow it, it is going to connect to this other tube, which is called the collecting duct. So the collecting duct is going to be this one. And you can see that it is going to go down, 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 and down, all the way until you get to the very bottom where you can see collecting ducts joining together. And this is called the papillary duct. And the papillary duct is going to be specifically at the very bottom of the renal, renal pyramid in the renal papilla, which is where you find the papillary duct. And then this is the very end of the nephron, which then leads out of the nephron into the minor calyx. Now, with the nephron here, just to kind of point out a couple more things while we're at it, let's go back to the Bowman's capsule where you can see that you have the nephron, like the rest of the nephron connected to it, but you should also see that there are some blood vessels going in and out of it as well. So these two are the arterioles, which either bring blood in or out of the glomerulus. And if you look closely, you have these larger blood vessels, these larger arteries, that are leading to it. This one is called the arcuate artery, leading to the interlobular artery, so interlobular artery, going up into the renal cortex. Coming off of the interlobular artery is the afferent or afferent arterial. And then coming out of the glomerulus is going to be the efferent arterial. And the efferent arterial can go to one of two places. If you look at this one over here, here's your afferent arterial your efferent arterial, and this kind of group of blood vessels or this bed of capillaries is going to have a specific name. So these capillaries are going to be surrounding your proximal and distal convoluted tubules. These are called peri, for around, tubular capillaries. So peritubular capillaries are surrounding the proximal and distal convoluted tubules, but also you could see that the efferent arterial leads down to surround the loop of Henle instead, and this is where you have what's called the vasa recta. And on the other side of either of those capillary beds, you can see that it leads to a vein. And if you follow this one in particular, you can see that you can go to a vein right next to interlobular artery. This is called interlobular vein, going to arcuate vein, 
And then that will lead to further veins as well. But I think with that said, that's about it for this model. So thank you for listening. Good luck with your studying, and I'll see you all next time.